So NASCAR finally returned from the Olympic break at Richmond Raceway for the Cookout 400. They introduced, well reintroduced, the option tires overall put on, I'd say a pretty good race, but a very, very controversial finish at Richmond. Let's talk about it. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. So like I mentioned we had the race at Richmond Raceway, we've had the Olympic break, we haven't had racing the last two weeks and the return for NASCAR was set to be at Richmond Raceway for the cookout 400. I know everybody wants to hear about the finish, and I will get to the finish here in maybe two minutes, three minutes at tops. But one of the big stories getting into this race was the tires. NASCAR decided to reintroduce the option tire, something they introduced for the all-star race where NASCAR has two sets of tires. They have a harder set of tires, which is your usual set of tires, the prime tires, they have six sets, then they also have the option tire, which is a softer set of tires, which produces more speed, but tends to fall off a little bit quicker. They had two sets. I think we noticed during this race that these tires were going to be a big factor in the event. The most notable thing I'd say that happened was Daniel Suarez decided to get those option tires a little bit earlier on in the event than most other drivers decided on doing, and he went flying. Daniel Suarez went flying through the field, took the race lead, drove away by around four seconds. Fantastic. He used those tires to the max. Great strategy by the number 99 team because they actually gave him a decent shot at the victory when everything was said and done. Daniel Suarez was one of the dominant drivers of the day. It was a it was a race mainly based on track position and strategy as most Richmond races are, I'd say. A lot of strategy throughout the day. The 99 team was one of those teams that was way ahead on strategy and the, I think the fastest car throughout the day was either the 11, the 20, or the 19. Of course, all three of these cars being Joe Gibbs racing vehicles. One of those cars being the number 19 of Martin Truex would actually have mechanical failures as a lot of Toyotas, especially the Joe Gibbs racing Toyotas, have had a lot of mechanical failures this season. And then also Christopher Bell had a pit road penalty so it looked like from this point forward that the driver to beat was Denny Hamlin and then all of a sudden there was this driver that really needed a victory to lock themselves into the playoffs that was driving up quick at the end of this race and that was Austin Dillon of all people y'all have heard me talk about Austin Dillon multiple times on this channel I'm a big fan of Austin Dillon, but it's been no secret that he's completely, completely struggled all year long. He's had the worst season of his career, but I'm going to be honest with you. Watching him tonight at Richmond Raceway, that was the best race I've seen from Austin Dillon in his career. I was incredibly impressed with how fast he was all race long. He drove up to Denny Hamlin made the pass in a legit fashion, made the pass, drove away, drove away by around almost four seconds away from Denny Hamlin, had the race locked up, and then with two laps to go, we have an incident between Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and Ryan Priest. And I knew at this point that we were set up for a very crazy finish, but I, I didn't know exactly what we were going to get. And now we're going to get to that controversial finish I was talking about 
And this was, let me think about it. One of the most controversial, disappointing finishes I've ever seen. This was desperate moves by a desperate man, and that man being Austin Dillon. I've said it here before, I am a huge fan of Austin Dillon. That's one of the reasons why I'm so harsh on him when it comes to this channel, because I'm a big fan of Austin Dillon. He seems like a cool person. He seems like he has a huge passion for racing, but just has not had the success for most of his career. He's won some big races, obviously, but overall he has not had the success in the Cup Series that I think a lot of people wanted and maybe even expected from him. And overall tonight, like I said before, I was crazy impressed. I was extremely impressed by what Austin Dillon was able to do on the racetrack here tonight. He showed a lot of speed and he took the lead. And honestly, if that caution didn't come out, I would be saying here right now that Austin Dillon won that race legit. He won that race in a legitimate fashion, did everything he could to win that race, and just won it on pure speed. I'm not going to repeat what Joey Logano said during his interview, but I 120% agree with what he said. That was one of the most disgraceful and desperate moves I've ever seen in NASCAR. I, I, I'm disappointed to see it. We've seen moves like this kind of kind of done, not to this extent, I'd say. I don't think I've ever remembered somebody taking out two drivers coming to the finish line. I've definitely seen drivers intentionally wreck somebody else for a win, but to intentionally wreck not one, but two different drivers to get a win... Like I said, desperate moves by a desperate man, Austin Dillon, not just trying to save his season and get into the playoffs, potentially even trying to save his career, as there has been a lot of rumors about retirement, moving on from the number three car, there has been rumors for around a year and a half now, I don't know if this necessarily ends the rumors, but he is in the playoffs at the moment, the NASCAR has not ruled out that they will decide to review this and change their mind and maybe give a penalty to the, to the number three of Austin Dillon. Ultimately, I don't think they will do that, but it is a possibility. All right, let's actually go over the incident itself. I've been kind of just rambling here. Let's go over the incident itself. Pretty much what happened here, Austin Dillon did not have the greatest restart. It looks like Joey Logano had a very slightly better restart and was able to clear Austin Dillon and began to drive away. And then coming in, you're, you're gonna look, you're gonna see it right here. Coming into turns three and four, Austin Dillon just completely, completely sends it in there around three car lengths back, gets into the back of Joey Logano, wrecking him. And at this point, when I was watching it live, I'm like, I don't think that's the right way to do it, but I've seen that happen in NASCAR a bunch of times. People wreck each other for the win. It happens. He completely sends it into the corner, wrecks Joey Logano, but then right after wrecking Joey Logano, it looks like Denny Hamlin is going to clear him to the inside Pretty much passing both of them because of Austin Dillon deciding to intentionally wreck Joey Logano. So then he intentionally wrecks Denny Hamlin. He decides to hook Denny Hamlin right into the outside wall. And that is, I, I don't, I, like I said, I honestly do not know what to say. I've sat here for a little while and honestly thought about it and I still don't really know what to say. And I've seen the comparisons, and I agree. This is something Dale Earnhardt would do 120%. I said that right when it happened. This is something Dale Earnhardt would do, and he's driving the number three car. And ultimately, I'm very on the fence if he should get penalized for it. But if you're not going to penalize this, you probably shouldn't penalize any sort of intentional wreck. I think I heard, I think it was Denny Hamlin and his 
post-race interview, he was mentioning the Lane Riggs incident where he intentionally wrecked Stefan Parsons and got parked for two laps. And then we have Austin Dillon intentionally wrecked not one, but two different drivers to not just wreck them to wreck them, but to win the race. I I don't know. We'll have to see what happens these next couple of days. There is a possibility on a penalty. I'm not necessarily expecting it, but this was a very disgraceful move. I've been a very big fan of Austin Dillon his whole career, even though I've necessarily... On, I've said it here before on the channel, I don't think he's necessarily deserving of a cup ride at this point. And this race right here has not changed my mind, mainly because of the way he won the race. But he's he's lost the respect of a lot of people. He's lost the respect of myself. Like I said, I'm I'm not a fan. I earned respect for Logano. I hate, I've said it here before, I hate Joey Logano. I, I don't like him as a race car driver. He's honestly a really nice human being. I've met him in person at Michigan. One of the nicest people you'll ever meet. But I hate him as a race car driver. But today, he probably earned a fan out of me because of what he said in his post-race interview. He didn't pull any punches. He said exactly how he felt. And I think, I think a lot of us agreed with what he had to say. That was a chicken something move that was that was that was horrible to see it was disgraceful it was a desperate move by Austin Dillon and honestly I have nothing positive to say if if that caution didn't come out I honestly would be sitting here telling you how great Austin Dillon did here today he had a great race but honestly he ruined all of that with his disgraceful desperate moves he's lost me as a fan and a win is a win. I know some of y'all are going to say it in the comments, so I'm going to say it right now. A win is a win. He won He won this race. And honestly, he, he potentially was the most deserving driver to win. But what he did was disgraceful, and it wasn't racing, and it was an embarrassment to the sport. And I'm, I'm really upset that he did it. Yeah, he, he, I, I, he honestly made it look like we were, we were on like NASCAR heat or something. He just completely sent it into three and four. And then just hooked Denny Hamlin. Eh. I, I got nothing really else to say about it. That's that's pretty much it. It was a disgraceful, desperate move from Austin Dillon. And I, I, I'm disappointed in him. I'm really disappointed in him. And then he acted like on the front stretch like he did something fantastic. It's just... Yeah, I, I agree with everything Logano said. I hope Logano sees this because this is the, he, he had he had the wisest words I've ever seen from anybody. And Denny Hamlin censored himself after the race. Even Tyler Reddick was pissed off. Tyler Reddick came hitting him after the checkered flag. Even Reddick was pissed off in his in his, in his interview, and he wasn't even involved in the wreck. Oh, what a disgrace! What a disgrace! Ruined. Honestly, uh, well, I wouldn't say he ruined it. It was still a very entertaining race at Richmond. We had tonight NASCAR and Goodyear did a great job with those tires. I have to commend them on that. I don't. I really don't want that to get lost in this disgrace of a finish. Goodyear and NASCAR did a great job with these option tires. Everything was done perfectly on NASCAR's part. There was, of course, not the greatest racing, I'd say, at Richmond. Richmond never produces the greatest racing. But overall, I'd say, if we exclude that disgrace of a finish, it was probably the best race I've seen at Richmond in maybe 15 years. It was a very entertaining race. All right, so I, I've done enough ranting here, but give me your thoughts down below. What did you think about the race at Richmond Raceway, the cookout? 400 what did you think about the tires and most importantly what did you think about that finish with austin dillon like like i said i i get the move i get wanting to get in the playoffs essentially save your season save your career rcr has had a bad year and this has been the one good thing that's happened all year but just to do it in that way is honestly disgraceful and 
in my opinion. I, I would assume Austin Dillon has lost the respect of every other driver in the garage. But that being said, give me your thoughts down below on the finish at Richmond Raceway, the tires, and everything we saw out there tonight. Now we head to Michigan, and hopefully we have a good race out there. Always a very entertaining race. I wish I was going to Michigan this next weekend. But we'll have to watch it on TV, and we'll see how the race goes. Maybe some stuff will carry on from Richmond. Also, if you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. But that'll do it for me. Thanks for watching. My name is Kyle, a.k.a. Racing Boy Short, saying peace.